What's going on everyone, Jason here again. And in this video, I'll be showing you how to set up a form using React and React Hooks. And so this is a project that we have. It's going to be a, a simple page with a navigation header here with a form. And we're actually going to be using Bootswatch to set up the styling for us. And the way it works is uh, we're going to have a form and we're going to enter some data and we're going to submit it. And we're going to see that data that we submitted and the data that we submitted is actually going to be submitted to a JSON server API. So that's a NPM package that allows us to have a fake API for us to uh, get, post, delete, and uh, update data. So we'll be using that to handle the submitting and the saving of our data that we submitted to this form. So you can kind of see a little bit more real world example. But uh, yep, so you'll see here that we can take our form and do this or just add title and then we'll add a description. This is a description. And if we submit it, when we submit it, it's going to then uh, post to the JSON server API and then it's going to save. And then we're going to actually have a method that'll be fetching that data back so that we can see what we have in our, uh, basically our data store, or in our case, it'll be a JSON file that'll have all of those notes uh, saved. So you, as you can see here, we have currently in db.json uh, this array of data. So if we add another one, do new note, and we submit, that was posted, and we're getting that data back. And as you can see, it is currently saved with an ID of three and the properties that we inserted. And also we'll have some a uh, simple validation setup to make sure if these fields are empty or if they don't meet the criteria. We'll just have an alert saying title is required, description is required. So that is the project. So let's jump right into it. So I set this project up using create react app. And uh, to do that, you just need to have node installed and run npx create react app and space and the name of your project. And I already ran that command, so we won't be running it. And we'll also be installing our packages. So we'll do an npm i install JSON server concurrently and uh, bootswatch. And now that those packages are installed, the next thing I'll do is set up these scripts to run our uh, project. So if we go inside here, we'll go into scripts. The first one will be JSON server. And then we'll do JSON server dash dash watch db.json dash dash port 5000. So the JSON server will be running on port 5000. db.json will be the JSON file that will store all of the notes that we submit. And then we'll make another script called dev. And then this will run both our JSON server and our React app. So we'll run the concurrently command that we installed. Do a backslash npm start to run the React app. Whoops. And then we'll do another backslash, do npm run JSON server. There we go. Now we'll run npm run dev to run the JSON server and the React app. And so since we don't have a db.json set up, JSON server will set that up for us with some dummy data. So as you can see, it created some data for us. And so if we go back into db.json, here is the uh, data that we got. So if we, and so here's our React app and we can do a localhost 5000 slash posts. And as you can see, here is the data that we get back inside the, uh, from the db.json file, we're getting this object there. So that is working. Okay, so then let's go ahead and change this to notes. And we'll change this to description. go 
Let's remove this since we won't be using all of that. Save that. And now we just need to go to notes. So there's our endpoint, that's working. Also, before I forget, we're going to add another property down here called proxy. And this will be so that when we make any uh, posts or get requests, it will, and we use the uh, fetch API, instead of having to type out this whole endpoint, we'll just type out slash whatever the endpoint is. So in our case, it would be notes. So we'll do localhost 5000. There we go. And we'll need to rerun our server again, just so it has the latest changes. Okay. And so now we'll go ahead and add the markup. So we'll add the uh, nav bar and the form. So let's delete some of the CSS in here that we won't be using. And let's go ahead and install or import our boots watch styles. So the theme we'll be using will be this Yeti theme. And to import those styles, we just need to take this command and copy it and go into our React app into index.js and import that in there and just replace this theme with the Yeti theme that we are using. Save that. And let's go to app.js, remove some of this boilerplate code. And uh, let's go back to the Bootswatch Yeti theme. And let's grab this markup, let's copy it. And we are not going to be using most of this, so let's go ahead and delete that. And delete this. And delete that. And change this to React form. Replace the class names with, or the class with class names since we are using React. Okay, save that. Go back to our React app. There's our form. It's looking good. Okay, so let's then add our form here real quick. So down here, we'll add a div. Give this a class name of container. And we're going to add some a style tag here to center our form. So let's see. So then for that, we just need to do a width of 400, do a margin top of 20. And let's go back to our, to the Bootswatch page and let's grab the, uh, the form. So we'll be using this, this input here and also the text area. And so let's go ahead and do add the form tag and then we'll add a field set. We're going to use the email. So let's grab this form group copy that delete the small tag we won't be using that and let's reformat this let's change this to text and replace both of these to title let's see uh, we'll just do example title And we can replace the placeholder with title. And we can remove these. We'll be using it. There we go. And make sure you add a slash there at the end of the input there. Okay, let's replace these class with class name. There we go. And our label will be title. See, before I forget, let's add a name property here. We'll call this title. I believe that's it. Let's see what we got. Okay, title is looking good. 
and let's add the text area. So we'll do, 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 do. let's see. So it should be this one right here. Underneath that, we'll add that. And all we need to change here will be the description. Add a name property of description. There we go. Cool. And then the last thing will be the button, the submit button. Let's just copy that there. And that should be good. There we go. Okay, so we have our form set up. And so now I'm going to set up some of our React state for the for the React app. So up here, let's add use state. We'll add use effect. And here we'll set up some state variables. First one will be notes. So this will be the uh, notes that we were seeing below the form that we're uh, fetching from the JSON server API to see what we have. So we'll use use state for that. And initially it'll be null. Next one will be the form, the form state. So this will be the state for our form object. We'll do use state. And then we'll the initial state will be an object and the object will have the properties of our form. So it'll be title and description. And uh, let's see, uh, we're also going to add a is submitting is submitting state variable. So this will be to, we're going to display a, a spinner to show that the uh, form is being submitted. So we'll do set is submitted. Submitting. There we go. This will be false. There we go. All right, cool. So then now we'll do a use effect to, so that when the uh, component mounts or it re-renders, we'll fetch the, uh, the data from the JSON server API. So we'll add a dependency array there. So that'll be empty. And so when this component mounts, we want to make sure we fetch the data. So we'll run a fetch notes command that we'll be defining here right now. So then this will be fetch notes. So fetch notes will be an async function since we are going to be fetching data. Okay, so fetch notes. Uh, let's see. So when we're fetching the data, we want to set is submitting to true. And then we're going to create a res uh, variable. This will be uh, this will be the uh, initial fetch of the data. So we'll do an await and await fetch of notes. And we're using await here because we created an async function. So we're able to use the async await syntax instead of using the uh, dot then syntax with promises. Okay, so then we have fetch notes. Then we're going to do a res.json to get the JSON there. So that's looking good. So now that we, so once we get back the data from the JSON server API, We'll set is submitting to false. Then we want to set notes to the data. All right, cool. And now let's go down here and let's actually display that data so that we can see it. So we'll do a div. We'll add some styles here. So the style, give this a width of 400, margin top of 20. Then we'll add some curly braces since we'll be using some J some JavaScript inside here. So we'll do, we'll do a JSON.stringify and we'll pass in the notes 
object array of objects pass in null and we'll do uh, eight so this is just some formatting of the JSON that we get back save that and as you can see we'll refresh and we're getting that data back okay so that is looking good and uh, also let's add that uh, loading spinner indicator so up here we'll go ahead and do let's see so right below our navbar we'll create add some curly braces we want to check if it's submitting is submitting is uh, true then we want to let's see we want to display a div this will be a class name of that'll be spinner border and uh, let's see role equals I don't believe we need that let's do that like that and then in here we'll do a span We'll give this a class name of SR only. Do loading. And, and uh, if it's not loading, we'll just leave it empty. So we won't display anything. And as you can see real quick, there is a loading indicator there. Although it's not centered the way I want it to be. Let's see. Uh, let's see, that's okay, we won't worry about it. Okay, so now I'm going to create a, a method to handle the user inputting values into our form. So that way we can update the form accordingly. So for that, we'll create a method called handle change. Pass in an event object. And then here we'll do a set form. So set form, we're going to pass in an object. So it'll be a new object. We're going to spread the current form properties that we have, and we're going to update it. And we're going to use a computed property value. So we'll do e.target.name. And remember e.target.name, name is coming from the name on our input fields. So based off whatever input, input field we are typing into, it's going to take that property and it's going to set it here and then uh, it's going to update that specific property uh, based off what the user is typing. So we'll do target.value there. All right, cool. Now handle change is set up. Let's pass that method onto our inputs. So we'll do on change, pass in handle change. And down here, we'll add the same thing for the description. So let's go ahead and console.log the uh, form so that we can see the changes as we are updating it. And so if we go into title, you see title is updated as we type into it. And description is also being updated. There we go. So that is looking good. Okay, so the next thing we'll add then is the uh, validation logic. So we can go down here, we'll do a const, let's remove that, we'll do a const, this will be, we'll call this validate. So this will be a, this will be a function and inside here, I'm going to create an errors object. So this will be an empty object. And then we're going to add the conditions. So in this case, if form.title is empty, we are going to then add to our error object error.title equal to title is required. And we'll add another one here. So form dot whoops title. And down here we'll just add description. So if form dot description or dot title is empty, we're going to add these properties to our error object. This will be description and description, there we go. And then we can return the error object. Okay, there we go. And also I'm going to set up another method and this will be 
let's see, we'll call this show error. So this will be in charge of displaying that alert message. So here we'll pass in the error object. And when we run this, we're going to create a string called error message. And make sure this is defined right. So we'll add a string. And then we're going to be uh, looping through our object of errors. So we'll do a uh, for in loop. So we'll do let error in error object. And then we're going to take our error message and we're going to be uh, uh, updating it accordingly. So we'll do backticks here and then we'll add a dollar sign. So we'll be passing in error object and then the error. There we go. And let me add a dot period there, space. Okay, so then once we have set up our error message string, we're just going to take it and do an alert. So we'll do a backticks there, we'll do errors. And then we'll take our dollar sign curly braces so we can use the error message variable. There we go. Okay, I believe that does it for that. All right, so now that we have that set up, next thing we need to do is set up the, uh, the uh, posting of the notes. So whenever we post uh, or whenever we submit our form, we want to set up the logic to post to our server API. And so we're going to create a variable or a method called, let's see, post notes. So this will handle the uh, posting of the form. So we'll do a async function and we'll, this will actually pass, or this will take in the data of the form that we're going to be submitting or the form data. And so we'll do, let's see. So we're going to do a wait and fetch slash notes. And uh, since we are posting, we need to pass in a few more parameters or arguments. The second argument will be an object. This object will have some properties. The first one will be method. We'll set that equal to post. Second one will be a property called headers, which will be an object. This will be a, the first property will be a string uh, of accept. This will be application JSON. Next one will be content, content type. And this will be the same as the top. So we'll just copy that. Oops. And the last one will be the body. So this will be the uh, actual data. And so the body will be json.stringify. And then we'll take, we'll pass in the data there. Okay, that looks good. And all right, so then the last method will be the handle submit. And that'll take an event object. And handle submit whenever we uh, submit the form. We're going to do e dot prevent default prevent default. So that way it doesn't automatically submit. And uh, so then we'll have we'll create a variable called errors. So this will be equal to the return of our validate function. So this is where the validation comes in. So we have our errors object there with potential errors. Then we're going to take uh, create an if condition and we're going to check if there are if there are any errors. So we'll do an object dot keys. Object dot keys will pass in the errors variable that we created. Take the length and we're going to check if it's equal to zero. So if it's equal to zero, that means there are no er no errors. Then we'll take is submitting. Set that to true. And then we'll do an await of post notes. 
and then we'll pass in the form object from our state. Then we'll take is submitting and then so once we have submitted our form, we're going to then set the form object uh, to title and it's going to be an empty title and description will be empty as well. So that was a success. We'll reset that. Else if there are errors, we're going to run our show error method and pass in the errors object. Okay. And then uh, down here we can fetch our notes. So we'll refetch that. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so I believe that is it. So let's save it. See if we get any uh, errors. Parsing error cannot use wait outside an async function. Okay. So that is inside our, let's see, handle submit. Okay. So, yep. So this needs to be an async function because we are using the async await syntax. There we go. Let's go into our form, make sure we add an on submit property to run our submit function. Let's see if we get any errors. All right. So let's run or let's submit that. As you can see, we're getting an alert. Oh, let me refresh this. There you go. So errors, title is required, description is required. Let's add something in here. Submit that. Description is required. Okay. So now let's submit our form. So new title. This is a new title. And if we submit, as you can see, we uh, submitted the form. The uh, form got reset. Oh, actually, it didn't get reset. So let's go back and see why that did not get reset. Uh, let's see. Oh, right, because I don't have a value property on our uh, input values. So we need to add a value and set that equal to form dot title for that. And down here, we need to add the description. So that way our form will be properly reset. So let's add another one. So note, this is a new note. And if we submit it, as you can see, our db.json contains the new note and the form got reset successfully. And our also, also our validation is working. So, uh, yep, so it looks like we're all finished. So there's a project. Uh, hopefully you all enjoyed it and learned something. So if you did enjoy it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more content like this, go ahead and subscribe. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a good day.